All right, hello chat. How's it going? Hopefully well. We're back and we are continuing with the Metal Gear 100%, but today we are technically past Metal Gear Solid at this point. We're in the VR missions, which don't seem like they're gonna take forever. People said that they were gonna be a pain in the ass. I don't think they're gonna be that bad. Unless like they start to get difficult and that ends up slowing things down. I think we're gonna be pretty all right, in all honesty. Um, I've not seen Quiet on set. This is the Nickelodeon one, right? Right? Uh, It doesn't say. It says uncovers toxic culture behind some of the most iconic children's shows of the late. This is the Nickelodeon one. Yeah, okay. It doesn't outright say it, but yeah, that's the Nickelodeon one. I haven't seen it. I've watched numerous documentaries about uh, the culture at Nickelodeon like over the last few years as, as it's come out more and more. I'm sure there's some new stuff in the quiet on set documentary that I haven't heard before. But I, I've I've seen some stuff about it over the years, so I, I know the gist of it. <laughs> um I forgot that this had its own little tiny tiny intro video. Hmm. 
Apparently Spencer from iCarly was a total Giga Chad. I I've heard that in the past as well. Um, I know that like the hush money that was offered is like a shit ton of hush money. Um, and there's only a small handful of them that didn't take those deals. Like, I don't think Jeanette McCurdy took one. I know Ariana Grande took one, which is because like, could you imagine if she hadn't taken the hush money? Like having someone who nowadays is as massive as Ariana Grande, like come out about all that. It would be bad for them. They got lucky that she took the money. Really. Is the audio fine? Because it's loud. But as long as it's not louder than me, we're good. I like this tiny intro. I've talked about it before. It's tiny because PC port things. Um... I'm playing in such a higher resolution than the original port that uh, these pre-rendered videos are really small. So we get stuff like this. Like they're playing in their original resolution when the total window size, you're a little quiet. I'll turn it down in a second. There's a UFO one. Oh, I'm apparently quiet. Well, the game is loud. It's not me quiet. Game loud. Oh my god. Oh, the intro is still going. It just, it doesn't stop. They went too hard with this one. It's like a whole cinematic intro, man. Thanks to the VR training I did on board the Discovery. There. It's over. Turn it down a little. That should be like a good amount. Okay, so... We got 4% of the way done the other day. Is the intro the full playthrough? Yes. The intro just shows everything. We were doing these no weapon ones. How many in did I get? I got through 12 of 15 of the no weapon sneaking mode trials. Is as long as the world record speed run? What? How do you speed run this in that amount of time? Watch out for searchlights for the goal. Oh, this one will be easy. How many missions are there in total? I think there's like 300. But we don't we don't worry about the total amount remaining. All right, if we worried about that, I never would have 100 percented Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom. You you focus on how many you have done, not how many you have left. Thirty-six more minutes of footage. There's no way in hell that is. Uh, you're, you're bullshitting. You have to be. Oh my god. I'm just gonna have to go for it. Fuck. I don't know when to go. <laughs> I'm trying to like look for the opportunity for when I should be running across, and I'm just not seeing it.
You didn't see anything. What was that noise? Hmm. Must have been the wind. Now we execute the master plan. Hello? This won't cut it when we're doing the time trial versions, that's for sure. Or the time attack. I don't know if... Do those count towards the completion? I think they do. Is my knocking not loud enough for you? Sir? We're gonna have to do this without the knocking strat. Um. Shit. I thought I could cut through there. I got a little, uh, over ambitious on that one. You just watch, someday you'll get there. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You don't focus on how much is remaining. You just you just go through it. You go through the motions. Oh my god. Okay, yeah, one of them has to get choked out. Absolutely. What was that? That just it'll make my life so much easier. I was on to something last time. I thought this one would be easy. I was like, oh, spotlights, child's play. But this is a very small area for me to be avoiding all these sight lines at once. There we go. We made it. Impressive sneak. Thank you. Next stage, please. Um. <laughs> Excuse me. There we go. There's seemingly a bug where when I press buttons in the menu sometimes, it's inputting twice. It happened there too where it like immediately reselected the mission. Good to know. Watch each enemy's movement and head for the goal. The enemy's security. That's it? Just get around the enemy. Man, I don't even have to watch their movement. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, this is messed up. Oh, this is a lot. This is a whole lot going on here. Nothing. This is another one where just throwing them in the chokehold will probably be very beneficial in the long run. Oh my God. Some of them are quite challenging. So far, it's just kind of like good fun. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I was really just like, if we sit perfectly still. Okay, I got this. I'm very, very stealthy. Honestly, the sneaking missions are so enjoyable that I, I would kind of just be down to have like the whole thing be this. Like just sneaking challenges. I know that there's going to be like a lot of weapon stuff like sniper challenges, grenade challenges, all that. But with how these are, I would just be down for the entire thing to be made up of these stealth challenges. What was that Oh, what? Oh, that was crazy. No, that was actually messed up. What was that noise? The part that it gets good is in the first episode of One Piece. You know, a lot of people say that One Piece starts out not very good. And I kind of agree. 
Again, this is the guy, like I, I've watched some One Piece. I, I am, I haven't watched much. Um, I kind of, like I see where you're coming from, you know? If you think that One Piece starts out and it's just not good at the start, I can see that. But I didn't mind it at the start, but I was also watching it with another person. What was that noise? So maybe that helped. Because from the first episode, I was kind of like, yeah, you know, I'm, I don't think this is bad. This is, this is pretty all right. I'm here for it. I can watch this. Ooh. Okay. He's going to hear it, right? Yeah, okay. Hmm. Must have been the wind. Who's that? Oh. Okay, that part is really crazy to try to get through. Because it looks like you're just outside of like where he's actually going to see you. When in reality, it's set up so that you are like perfectly within where he's going to see you. Like you are oh, just close enough when you go to make that maneuver that he's gonna spot you as you go by. Oh my God. Another one. That's three down. I don't have to clear them all out. I, I was doing it the other day where I was actually clearing them out just to kind of add another layer to it. But at this point, getting to the end can be tricky enough. <laughs> clearing them out makes it a lot easier though, for sure. Okay, yeah, there's like a long enough gap if I hit exit that I don't get the weird like double input bug. It's probably just a controller thing because on the PC version, you have to mod controller support into it to even be able to use a controller like this. So it might just be to do with that. The VR missions might not like the controller and the menus all that much. Because I mean, the original game, you're in the menus for all of like 30 seconds. You do nothing in the menus. You just go straight into the game. Uh, use what I've learned in training and head for the goal. Oh. Oh, is this going to be one big stealth challenge? Ah, uh, okay. Well, there's a, uh, a crawl space to my right. I think that's my best bet, personally. I actually like the VR missions. Like, I still... Uh, I made the right call not doing a video for the... Like, you just... I couldn't make a whole video out of these. But these are fun. I like these. Oh, okay. Not messing with him. Metroid can crawl? Yes. Metroid can roll, crawl, whatever. Oh. Okay, this, this didn't exactly make life easy. First try. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Impressive sneak. What? <laughs> I wasn't ready for the little jump. And yeah. So are these the same stages, but I just have to complete them quickly? Oh man, there's, there's no way. Does that say five seconds? Oh, 20 seconds. Yeah, these are the same. I can do this in five seconds. I know exactly what to do. See, using the little wall spaces, that's the 20 second strap. But here, four seconds. Easiest run of my life. What was that? Oh my God, the percent went up.
Okay, the time attacks are required. Honestly, let's do everything. Like, I mean everything. In practice, and then go back for a time attack sweep. Just for a little more variety. You know, we can come back to the, the sneaking stuff after we do everything else that way. These are going to be different, right? Eliminate all enemy soldiers and... Oh. Oh, same stage, but it gives me a SOCOM. And it literally requires me to kill every enemy. Oh. Uh. Impressive sneak. I see. I could do that. Jolly ass dude. The little hop was so... Like, I was not ready at all. Oh. What was that noise? Who's that? Shit. That's the challenge I was talking about earlier. Okay. So that's where, like, I'm gonna get to like 50%. And then the progress is probably going to slow down just because of time trials or time. You know what I mean? Time attacks. I'm using the general term. I can do it. I platinumed Crash Bandicoot 1 on the Insane Collection back when that came out. I can definitely do Metal Gear Solid time attacks. If I can do fucking Crash Bandicoot 1 time attacks, I got this. If you've never played Crash Bandicoot 1, you do not know what I'm saying. You, you don't fully comprehend what it actually means to have platinumed that game on the remasters. Where they added like extra challenge to it. They added extra stuff that you had to get for 100%. It's why I only did the first game for Platinum on PS4. Because, like, I, I got all the way through that, and then I was done. Like, I, I didn't have it in me to do Crash 2 and 3. I haven't gotten to the Sorrow in MGS3, but I'm going to have to slog through it for, like, an hour. I killed so few enemies during my review playthrough of MGS3. Um, that the sorrow was st like, I think the amount of time you spend walking is the same regardless, but I just kind of walked with like nothing happening for a lot of that encounter. Cause I think outside of the bosses, I killed a total of like five enemies up to that point. <laughs> because even when I got spotted, which was a lot, I got spotted a lot when I played. But even when I did and I raised the alert, I was doing the flip move. I talked about it in the review. On normal difficulty, you take like no damage from bullets. So I was just running around and using like the flip takedown to instantly knock out every enemy whenever I got spotted because it was honestly just the quickest and easiest way to get out of the alert. I found the strategy. Crash 3 was the worst 100% back on ps1 yeah yeah so if you don't know what they did with the remasters let me let me fill you in on the details they added all those extra challenges and stuff that crash 3 had into crash 1 and 2 so they they made it so that you had to play like those levels which in my opinion crash 1 is by far the hardest of them like just pure difficulty to get through the game sort of thing. And you had to do like all of the Crash 3 stuff, like the time attacks and everything, right? It was wild. It was so much work to get that platinum. Uh-oh. I've also been doing the run-up throw. Like a true KY main? KY main? Explain. But the, uh, the throw takedown is actually nuts in MGS3. Like, if you're on anything... People were saying that on, like, hard mode and above is when MGS3 actually starts to feel, like, kind of, um... 
Uh, difficulty wise, like on par with MGS 1 and 2. Apparently it's hard mode for some reason. Like they just made the normal way easier. Um, on normal and below, that throw move is just it's the way to go, man. You get spotted, you go around throwing everyone. Instant takedown. It's like minimal effort. Just go up and like flick the thumbstick, right? It's so easy. Regenerating health in the game. No need for healing items. So th that's not a worry. Like you're not going to take enough damage to die. And the damage you do take doesn't matter because of health regen. Oh, now I can just <laughs> run on the floor panels. See, this part's kind of weird. Like, I can see what they were going for, because they were like, okay, how do we do a weapon challenge with the SOCOM? And I guess the conclusion they came to was just use the sneaking stages, but require that on top of not getting spotted, you kill all the enemies. It's kind of odd. But I guess they just, that, that's what they came up with for like, how do we even make a weapon challenge for the SOCOM? Okay, my auto-aim is pulling into the wall because of... <laughs> Alright. Yeah, my controls from the base game carried over. So I don't have the quick select thing on my weapon. I just bound all of the controller stuff for MGS1 to be exactly like MGS2 controls. Because I, when we started MGS1 on stream, I had just done the MGS2 review and I didn't want to relearn everything controls wise. And honestly, like outside of having no like quick select for the weapons to just reload and stuff, it's perfect. Like I think that MGS2 just had the better control scheme in general. Why is there a video out on Thursday? Uh, the video, I scheduled way too much shit outside of just the video production this last week, and I didn't think that the Acid 2 video would be as much work as it was. So it wasn't done until yesterday. But hello, Oscar. Oh. Okay. I would have been fine, it's just, it scared me. Damn it, it's not aiming at him. Thank God. What the hell is this? This is VR missions. Just little little challenge gauntlet. For, ah, shit. MGS1 challenge gauntlet. There's 300 challenges. Is that 300 challenges? Does that include the time attacks? I think it does, right? I think it's 150 challenges and you have to do them with and without the time attack, right? I'm pretty sure. Not 100%, but I think that's what's up. It includes all the different modes. Okay, yeah, yeah. So it, it's 150 challenges, but we have to do each one normally and then do each one under a time limit. So far, we're kind of just breezing through. There are so many guards. Shit, okay. I'm gonna have to be kind of quick. Remember what Solid Snake said, kids? Smoking saves lives. I don't think that MGS1, wait. Did your health go down with the SIGs in MGS1? Because I honestly don't remember. I think it did. A VR port of Metal Gear Solid? No, that would be amazing though. That would be so good if they just... Konami, Konami. Listen, listen. Once you're done with like whatever remakes you do or don't do, depending on the success of Metal Gear Delta, hear me out. We turn the Metal Gear Solid games into VR games and we resell them that way. I would buy them. <laughs> we, we could all sit here and think to ourselves, well, that would feel kind of lazy, wouldn't it? 
But we would all buy it. If they were just like Metal Gear Solid in VR, we would all buy it. Let's be honest. We would. Would make it a Quest 3 exclusive, they probably would. Bastards. VR headset exclusivity bugs the shit out of me. Like console game exclusivity bothers me enough. Like I already don't like that, but with the VR headset stuff, oh, it makes me upset. Oh, does it make me upset? Especially PlayStation VR. Um, Wear box? Oh. I do have the box for this. You know, now that you say it, I kind of was like, how the hell did I do this before? But because I didn't read the text at the beginning, I didn't remember that I had the box for this one. Just a box. I'm actually kind of lucky the camera didn't spot me. I was nervous about that. Impressive sneak. Thank you. 8%, 8.3 to be exact. We're cooking. It's actually nice to have a percent counter on this too. Although I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that when we do MGS 2 and 3, not 100%, but I think I'm just gonna pick up the master collection and like mod the games to fix them. Like download a mod to fix MGS 3's audio and stuff like that, right? Um, I think I'm going to just use the Master Collection since for all the games that are in the Master Collection, we're already just using those achievements as like our criteria anyway. Um, I think I'll just pick it up. I'll bite the bullet on it. And uh, we can just actually use like the Steam achievements to keep track of what I need to do and what I haven't done and blah, blah. Uh-oh. No one's. Still better than rock hole. Hey, we're, we're really cooking, all right? 8.6%, just like that. Just like that. This is a hell of a lot better than, uh... Was it two days ago? What? What? Yeah, it was two days ago. The the DMC stream. It was the first Devil May Cry stream of the the S ranking journey where I did not get a single S rank for the entire stream because the mission that we are on is so difficult on Dante Must Die that I actually, in the entire three hours of stream, it's not just I couldn't get the S rank I didn't even complete the mission a single time. It was so hard that in three hours of playing, I never even saw the mission complete screen. Just to see how you dealt with the bosses. Wait, what? Every chapter I finish. Oh, Armored Core 6. And the game is absolutely amazing. Are you playing it for the first time? I missed the first message, so for a second I was like, what game are we talking about? Armored Core 6. It is a great game. It's really good. Like, really good. If it wasn't for the Resident Evil 4 remake, just being a little more like my style, personally, Armored Core 6 would have been my game of the year last year. Which is wild because like I'm not a mech game guy. Like I'm I'm not a mech guy. I you know I don't watch Gundam. I I've never built like a Gundam like a mecha model kit or anything. But that game just kicks ass. Armored Core Six is just really really good. Okay, hold on. Ha ha! Mechanics. There's the auto aim. You're a mech guy now. Look, just because False has dubbed me the mech guy, that doesn't mean shit. Actually, I don't even... 
You guys want to know... So in False's server, because she's an admin, uh, because she owns the server, she can change my nickname in the server to whatever the hell she wants. So hold on, I'm on my phone. I'm going there to see... So my name in her server, this is not me, by the way. She keeps changing my name. Right now, um, my name in her Discord server is Deep Chult in brackets, mech guy, IGN. That's what she has named me in her Discord. And I can't do it, like, I can't change it. Because if an admin changes my name, it overwrites me changing my name. So that's just, that's my name in her Discord server. Deep Chult Mech Guy IGN. What was that noise? Thank you, False. <gasps> Wait, I, okay. In my brain, I did not even like look to see if there was anyone else there. <laughs> I didn't realize he was there. When you saw her change it live on stream, the IGN is new. I knew about Deep Chult. She added Mech Guy like a, a bit later, and now she's added IGN to it. Because she's a bitch. Hello? Auto aim? Thank you. To Balls. I should just ask her can you just make my name Balls? I could just ask for it. She probably wouldn't do it. I think she's proud of what she's named me. But I could ask to get renamed to Balls. The, the best part is I'm like near the top of the, the name list because she has me in the category of like, uh, she has like all of her content creation friends like up near the top of the list with like the roles. So my name is just like, it's stuck pretty high up there. And whatever she changes it to, it's up there, easily visible. In terms of both quality and skill. No, one of her, her best friend, I, who, who's a mutual friend? I, I, I've kind of spoken with him a bit, not much, but uh, he apparently, somehow compared me to IGN at one point, like my videos. And False thought that it was the funniest thing ever because she was like, I bet that Cole hates IGN. She messages me on Discord and just asks, do you like IGN? And I replied, fuck no. <laughs> and ever since she changed the name to have IGN in it in the Discord server. False and balls. They even kind of rhyme. It's a stretch. But it kind of works. Wait a second. Hold on. Did you guys see? Hold, okay, okay, okay. You guys know, well, actually, a lot of you guys probably don't know, and I don't know exactly what's going on with this, but I, I read a little bit about it this morning. Um, There are big things happening with a pretty large gaming IP that you may or may not have heard of, Borderlands. Um, As in the ownership and the studio that will be making the games from this point on is changing. Because Embracer Group, not the show, it has nothing to do with the show, the games. I, I ever since I saw the casting for the show, I, I'm totally, I'm out. I, I, I don't care what they do with it at this point. It's doomed. Gearbox is kill. Yeah, so Embracer Group owns, um, Take Two Interactive now, which by the way, if you know anything about Embracer Group's uh, endeavor into the games industry, you know how awful it's been. Um, but they, they own Take Two Interactive now and Embracer Group is also currently going bankrupt. Like they are just dying as a company. So they keep selling off these studios and these companies that they own. And right now what they're doing is they're selling off the border, Borderlands IP. Um, I don't fully understand what's happening, but I think they're selling the IP. 
I could be wrong on that. I should clarify. I didn't read a whole lot, but I think they're selling the Borderlands IP. They're taking it away from Gearbox. Yeah. Take two bought it? I think they own Take Two. Hold on. Borderlands Embracer Group. I'll figure this out real quick. 460 million. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, okay. I see what's happening. This is even crazier than what I thought was happening. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. So Take Two did buy it. Take Two bought the IP off of Embracer Group for $460 million. Whoa. Hold on. I mean, that's so crazy because Borderlands has been around for 2008 to now, 16 years. Uh, and it has never once been developed by a studio other than Gearbox, except for like Tales of the Borderlands, right? Like the, the Telltale game. Wait. Now I have SOCOM challenges? Only five of them. Oh, there's only five per weapon. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. These will be short and sweet per weapon then. Kind of morning right now. I mean, I, okay, I haven't played Tiny Tina's yet. I just, I didn't buy it when it came out. Oh. I probably should have read that text, to be honest. I put it together. Um... I didn't play Tiny Tina's yet, but I heard it was better than Borderlands 3, and I thought Borderlands 3 was pretty good. The writing was, the, the writing was awful. Like I couldn't stand the character work and stuff, but the gameplay and like the RPG systems in Borderlands 3, really fun. I, I just, like, at this point, I'm kind of waiting to see, like, Tiny Tina's on sale for, like, 20 bucks or less. And then I'll I'll swoop it up and probably get more than my money's worth out of it, knowing Borderlands. Uh, I don't know how many hours I have in Borderlands, because most of my hours would be, like, on Xbox 360 with, like, Borderlands 2 and stuff. Is Take-Two a good studio? Take-Two is a publisher. Um... They aren't the worst. I would say they're like kind of in the middle. They're not great. They're not terrible. Um, they own Rockstar. Who else do they even own? Like, I honestly, it's hard to remember. The big one, their big studio that they own is Rockstar. Man, who else does Take Two own? Someone throw me a bone here. We got Borderlands 2 Game of the Year Edition in a Humble Bundle. Dude, when Borderlands 2 goes on sale, you can get, like, the game and all the DLC for, like, I think it's, like, $4 nowadays. It's insane how cheap Borderlands 2 goes on sale for. It's, like, Payday 2 levels of, like, um, what's it? Just game per dollar, if you will. Like when Payday 2 goes on sale and you can literally just buy that game for like a dollar and then all the DLC is like a dollar a piece if you want it. Went free on Epic at some point too. Did it? I don't remember that. Uh, probably because I already owned it. So I didn't need to pick it up. Uh, I'm exiting because the menus are being kind of weird with my controller. And also I get to see the percent every time, which is also kind of nice. 
Destroy all targets and head for the goal. Yeah, these are just simple. Borderlands 2 is one of those games that I feel like everyone has to have played at some point. Especially with like how cheap and accessible it is nowadays. It's like you have to at least have tried Borderlands 2, right? It's just one of those. You don't have enough reason to not have tried it. Yeah. And <laughs> whenever he clears like the whole challenge, the little yeah jump is so good. 12% boys, we're cooking. We're moving so fast. Destroy the target and head for the goal. I've never played Borderlands 2. Get on it. Get on it. Borderlands 1 is also, like, you can pick all of them. Well, not all of them. You can pick up the first, like, three games for dirt cheap. Like, all three of them. Borderlands 1, 2, and pre-sequel. Um... 3 and Tiny Tina's go on sale a lot. I've seen Tiny Tina's on sale for like 30 bucks. I've seen 3 on sale for like 20 bucks. Oh shit. Man, that's a much larger explosion than I actually thought it was. Booyah. Impressive snake. Get around to it eventually. It's it's just good, stupid, fun. Just one of those games that you can sit down and it's like, yep, this is a video game. Oh my God. Woo! Four and one. Oh, that's pretty awesome. The chain reaction on these. That's pretty good. I like that one. Thank you. Can we get more like that? Oh, those are chain reaction ones. Bloodstained is awesome. Hold on. I just saw this morning. Speaking of Humble Bundle, I think they are doing a sale. Yeah. They're doing one of those like indie boomer shooter bundle sales that I actually am going to buy because it's a bundle of seven games. One of them's not indie. One of them's kind of random, but it's a bundle of seven boomer shooters and I only own one of them right now. But it's seven boomer shooters, almost all indie, for 18 bucks. It's Ultra Kill, Turbo Overkill, Forgive Me Father 2, Dead Link, Proteus, Quake 2, and Postal Brain Damaged for 18 bucks. So I'm gonna hop on that before that sale ends. <laughs> does it have Ultra Kill? It does. Which is one of like the indie boomer shooters that I've been meaning to play, but I just haven't gotten to yet. As is like Proteus and Turbo Overkill and Postal Brain Damage. Like those are all games that I've meant to play, but I just haven't gotten around to picking them up before. Oh, what the fuck? So I'm definitely gonna grab that bundle and then I'll just give my Quake 2 key to someone. I'll find someone who wants it. Cause I already have Quake 2 and I've already played the shit out of Quake 2. How do I do this? Oh my God, how do I do that? Does the explosion take it out from here? There's no way. Um, I'm loving the Metal Gear 2 music, by the way. Ah, I was so confused at first. Okay. Oh, and then I go back around. Should have rotten dust. They did one last year that had like dusk and a medieval. I don't think Harat was in there. Yeah. But I've already played those, thankfully. Impressive snake. 
Dusk was like the first one that made me like, oh, the indie boomer shooter scene is kind of going off right now. Oh, I think like, um, is it Ion Maiden? Is that what it's called? No, Ion Fury? Which, which, wait, is Ion Fury the sequel? I don't remember. <laughs> that was in there. Man, it's been so long since I played that one, and that one was good too. Oh, for fuck's sake. Impressive sneak. I love boomer shooters. Don't tempt me with a fucking stream series where I just play boomer shooters. Don't even. Don't start, because I will. Ow, these explode. I love them. Fashion Squad, I haven't played Fashion Squad. I, I like the idea behind it, but I, I've seen some gameplay and I don't think it would be my thing. But I do like like the novelty behind it. I, I think it's really funny, it's creative but it's just not like entirely my thing. There's a couple like that, like, um, like the Citadel. Um, I've seen the Citadel games. There was actually, they just put out a new one. Um, oh, that's right. Ion Maiden is Ion Fury. The name got changed. That's why I always get it confused. That's, thank you. Cause I was like, why can I not keep it straight? Like what name it is? It's Ion Fury now, right? That's what they had to change it to. Yeah, okay, that's why. I always call it Ion Maiden, like every time. And then I'm like, oh wait, I don't think that's right. Cause I always forget they had to change it. But that one was good. You know what was really good that I've been waiting on the sequel for a long ass time? Was Project Warlock was really cool, man. The second one isn't out yet, is it? Impressive sneak. Where you just play boomer shooters would be amazing. Dude, you know how some streams can turn into just an absolute yap fest? Boomer shooter streams would be so bad. I would just be yapping the whole time. When like all that the gameplay is, is like running around in a circle, just blasting shit. Which, you know, sometimes that's all we want to do. Cultic? Cultic isn't out yet, is it? Did it come out? Am I behind? I played the demo like two years ago or something for Cultic. And it was so good. It's not out, is it? I love, cause Blood is probably like my second favorite boomer shooter. I fucking love Blood. So Cultic was so my thing. It is out? Are you shitting me? No one told me that it was out. In 22, there's no way. Yeah. That was like when the demo came out, was like 2022. Robbie, thank you for the sub, appreciate it. Saw someone play the demo a while ago. It was, the demo was so good. I played the demo like over and over again. I, I played it a good few times. Just that one level. It was so good. There was just so much going on. Like the voxels were, were so cool. I love that shit. Okay, I was a little scared. Grenades are gonna get a little dicey. Oh, that's so clever. Okay, that's kind of fun. One boomer shooter that I've meant to go back and replay for a long time, because I haven't played it since like 2018, um, is a medieval. If we did do anything where I like streamed boomer shooters, I would definitely get to a medieval at some point. Because I played it like six years ago and I thought it was the shit. And they just recently put out an expansion for it, right? I think they just came out with that expansion for a medieval recently too. Oh shit. 
I thought a medieval was awesome. Like, I remember the big three that I was like, oh man, this is... Like, the indie scene is so good for boomer shooters. It was like Dusk, a medieval, and Ion Fury. Impressive. Were like the three that I played a few years back that I was just like, oh my god. These indies are absolutely cooking. Like, who is letting them do this? Who is letting these random people, like these random solo devs, just put out like the best FPS games on the market right now? Who who allowed this? Who told them they could do this? There's a really cool one that actually, um, I had no idea about this one until False covered it. This is a really like on the down low indie boomer shooter that's in development currently. So check this one out, because I doubt many of you, maybe like one of you has heard of it up to this point. Uh, I think it's called Paperhead. I'm pretty sure. Uh, False actually covered it because she kind of does like indie horror. And she looked at it and thought it was a horror game. And then she started playing it on stream and it turned out to be an indie boomer shooter that just had like a lot of horror elements and stuff. Uh, it's really clever. Like the first weapon that they give you is like a pen and pencil, or sorry, like a paper and pencil. And it has different ammo types. In the demo that's available, the only ammo type is, um, is bombs so you can like on this little piece of paper you can like draw bombs and then they'll plop down in front of you and you have a kick move because of course you do so you like draw a bomb on this piece of paper and then it like materializes in front of you and then you kick it at the enemies and she started doing that and i was like oh okay this dude the guy who's making this is is doing some good shit oh does it want me to cook these you can cook grenades in Metal Gear Solid, right? Yes, you can, because I've had them blow up in my hand. Yeah, there we go. I don't know the timing. Shit. Have a kick button. Yeah, that's when I said the kick button thing. I was like, because, yeah, of course it has a kick button. Oh, shit. Thank you, 3D Realms. Hey, no one's complaining for the, the kick button, right? No one's complaining about it. I'm certainly not. I'm all here for the kicking. It's fun. Yeah. Is it like rubber hose art style? I don't think I know rubber hose. Here, we just cleared a whole category of weapon stuff, right? 17%. Let me pull up Paperhead. Let me do this real quick, just to show it off, because it's actually, it's really cool. Yeah, it is called Paperhead. Okay. He did a trailer a few months back. This was like around the time that False covered the game, too. So here. Look at this. Keep the audio quiet. But this is still uh, coming along in development. But this guy, if you ask me, this dude is cooking up some good shit. There was a lot of platforming in the demo too. She was doing a ton of platforming when she played it. I haven't played this one personally. I, I only watched False play it and I immediately went and followed this guy on Twitter. Because look at this. This is sweet. <laughs> you draw the door and you kick it in. I forgot about all these little things. When I saw her playing this, I was like, oh, this dude knows what he's doing. This dude knows exactly what he's doing. <laughs> this is sweet. But yeah, this, I've had this on my list, and like no one has heard of this. The demo's out, if, if anyone wants to go and check that out. I think it has a Steam page now. Hold on, let me go look. I know that when False first played it, um, sorry, I, I was playing Tekken 7 with a buddy early this morning, like early, early. He wanted to go back and play 7 for, um, 
Eddie Gordo. He was like, we should play Eddie Gordo before he comes out in eight. And I was like, that's a good idea. Sorry, Paperhead. Yeah, it, it does have a Steam page now. You can go and grab the, the demo on Steam. It used to just be on Itch, but now you can grab it on Steam if you're interested. How did False think it was a horror game? Because she just looked at the screenshots that were on Itch. And like all of the screenshots were pretty much just like of the environments and stuff at the time. Quake meets Paper Mario. It, it looked really cool, man. Like when she was playing it, I was like, well, False, you somehow stumbled into something that is like entirely my shit. I don't know how you did it. Okay, we're on to Claymore. But yeah, I like immediately after her stream of it, I went and followed that guy on Twitter. So I've been keeping up. Wishlisted immediately downloading demo. Oh, there are claymores in. I know what I'm doing. I have to spread the word of Paperhead because that shit looks awesome. I know what I'm doing, you guys. Why would they do this to me? Why would you put Claymores down in the Claymore trial? Booyah. Impressive. The music in the game was also really good. It only had like a couple tracks, but from those couple tracks, they were very, very good. Oh my God, there's a lot of Claymores again. Who is doing this? Who's putting these Claymores here? But yeah, I played a little bit of Eddie Gordo on Tekken 7 this morning. That is actually a thing that I did. Because they're doing a Tekken talk tomorrow, or yeah, tomorrow morning, like early. I think it's going to be like 3 a.m. my time zone is when they're doing the talk, so I won't be able to watch it live. Um, But they said that the talk is going to be about Eddie Gordo, mostly. So I'm fully expecting like character trailer and release date tomorrow. Because it, we've also been hearing rumors that Eddie Gordo for Tekken 8 is going to drop in April at some point. So I think I think he's pretty close. I think we're getting a release date tomorrow morning for Eddie. Call me crazy, but I think I got this figured out. Oh, that got both of those. Okay. Uh oh. Okay, thank God. That one was probably the easiest one so far of the, the Claymore Trials. Impressive snake. I got this shit. I'm so good at this. Whoa. Whoa, okay. Um, what? Oh boy. Oh, okay, he's just going in that circle. Bum, 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 bum. The Metal Gear 2 music is great. I am so here for the Metal Gear 2 music in the challenges. It's a shame I can't play it. Someday, someone will, will actually get around to uh, making it playable on RPCS 3. I have zero doubt that, you know, it, it's inevitable that someday it will be playable. It's just who has any idea when that day is going to be. Because, you know, right now, with there really not being any new game or like hype around Ace Combat in such a long time, uh, the community is pretty small currently. Oh, I have a finite amount of claymores. 
I just never even used all of them. Like, I mean, there's always been a finite amount, but when we were doing the grenade challenges, it was giving me like a hundred frag grenades for like five targets. So, you know, I thought that we were basically getting unlimited resources. Revive Metal Gear Online 1. Yeah, because like all it takes, people have revived like Gen 5 Armored Core. Uh, people got around to doing that last year because of all the hype around AC6. Like you can go and play Verdict Day online on RPCS3 now because someone made a fan server to host it on. Like all you have to do is just connect to that server host through the emulator and like, boom, you're playing Verdict Day online. So inevitably someone will, uh, what's it? We'll get around to reviving AC Infinity. It's just who knows how long it's gonna take. Shit. How do you even blow yourself up? I don't know, sometimes it seems like it just happens when I'm standing like right with it. It doesn't happen a lot of the time, but once in a while. Hello? One of my claymores just disappeared. Oops, that one. Oh, that. Never mind, that works. Fuck, that's my claymore. <laughs> you guys didn't see that. It's like just every once in a blue moon, one of the claymores as I put it down will blow me up. It's only weird because it doesn't happen the majority of the time. Uh oh, bad placement. Gets the job done though. See, I'm trying to go fast. Oops. Where are you going? Oh, there. And they would name an explosive after yeah. a sword. I don't know why they call it that. Sneak. I have seen the remade bosses in Infinity. Nikita Trials should get a little wacky, probably. At least I would think they're going to. Well, it's a job well done. Impressive um, expecting some AC news. Oh, we're doing the third one. We're doing it live. Shit. I got this. Oh, 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 I got a little. Okay. Come on now. Shit. First person? I don't think this makes it any easier. First person is really nice if you're like tracking a target. For navigating with it, it I, I think it's a little trickier. Fuck. Maybe I should look at the screen while I'm using rockets. Uh, we're doing the exit thing because of a weird bug that I'm getting. We're, we're on the PC port, like the old one. 
Uh, so we have the controller support modded in. It, it, it's not originally in this PC port. Uh, and we're getting some weird like menu bugs with the controller. from Scotland. Oh, that might make sense. The GOG release? Yes. The old 2000 PC port. This time. This time for sure. which has some problems. Oh no. But I opted for this version for like the video and streams and stuff because it's got less bugs than emulating it. And it looks a hell of a lot better than what's available in like the master collection. Because for some reason they decided to leave the master collection version in 240p. Like, maximum 240p. I don't know whose idea that was, but someone thought it was a good idea. Clearly. I don't know why the resolution caps are as low as they are in general in the Master Collection. <laughs> um, Because... It's weird to me that, like, on modern systems, like, not even just PC, like, also for, like, PS5 and stuff, um, it's weird to me that they capped, like, MGS 2 and 3 at 1080p, and they don't have them running at 4K. Because the systems that we have right now could easily run those games in 4K. So I'm not sure why, like, even outside of MGS1, why they've capped the resolutions so low in the Master Collection. It's kind of weird to me. Oh, God. First person in... Oh, see, you guys, you guys... Aha! Uh -huh. You're using your brains in a way that... Oh, shit! Uh-oh. The old font? Yes. That's another one of the mods that I have in here, is to get the original PS1 font in there. There's a few things in here. There's the controller one. There's the font restoring. Did you, no, I knew about first person. I just, I literally a minute ago, I was saying like first person is great if I'm like tracking a target and I want to see where they are. But other than that, I have an easier time like steering the missile with the top down view. And so my brain, I was just like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm just going to use the normal camera. Oh God. Okay. Okay. Shit. This is going to be a bitch. Um, oh God. Sweet Jesus. Man, God help me when we start doing the time attacks. PS1 hitbox is cool. Just, just keep it cool. I was gonna say, is that gonna hit the corner again? You guys, I got this, all right? I got this. I know. I know what I'm doing, clearly. I'm a professional. We got the fox rank. Do I want to go to the right instead? Is there a camera over this way? No, that's way easier to go that way. Okay. Let's just go to the right. That's so much easier yeah. to go over there. 
Oh. I was like reaching for my can behind my mic, but I had moved it. I was really confused where it was. How many more weapons are there? Hold on. PSG1. Oh, only a couple. Okay. Just this and the stinger then. The clap of the missile's ass cheeks. Okay. These should be pretty easy, right? Whoa, we are very far back. And I have to grab the medicine, or diazepam medicine, the drugs. I got this. Boom. It is just one shot, thankfully. Boom. Oh, now I have to <laughs> run out, okay. Is the player riding right now? It's like, if you want it to be, it can be. Like, for me, I'm basically like, yeah, it's riding. Because it's more fun for me that it is Raiden doing the VR missions. But, like, it could be anyone doing the VR missions. Someone brought it up last time when I was like, yep, this is Raiden doing the missions. Like, it could legitimately be anyone. But we know that Raiden did these exact missions. So, like, you know, my head cannon personally, it's Raiden doing this right now. Impressive Also, the VR mission in Ghost Babble. Ghost Babble's not canon, you bitches. It's official. Like, it could be. It doesn't conflict with things if it is, like, VR mission wise. It can be if you want it to be. But, like, on the official record, Ghost Babble isn't canon. Ghost Babble is good, though. I feel like I kind of wish it was canon because more people would play it if it was canon. Like, because it's a non-canon spinoff, a lot of people just haven't played it, but, like, it's good. I think Metal Gear 2 is, like, my personal favorite 2D Metal Gear, but I think Ghost Babble is probably the best 2D Metal Gear. Squares is the VR missions. We're training. We're training, false. And if you listen to my head cannon, we are not, in fact, Solid Snake, but we are a femboy. It fucking kills me, by the way. Like, my favorite Metal Gear Solid trivia, I think, has to be that they made Raiden the main character in MGS2 because female players in Japan thought that Raiden was more appealing, that he was more attractive than Solid Snake. And that is genuinely the reason that they made him the main character. That's hilarious to me. So funny to me that that's actually why they went with it. Deactivate my femboy inhibitors. Aha! The delay on the rounds makes it a little weird. But we get it done. Impressive snake. Also, hello, false. Can I be- can I have my name changed to balls in your Discord server? No reason? <laughs> just... Just saying. Uh, that would be nice. That is all. <laughs> we would like to make a collective formal request to change my name to Balls in your server. Justice for Balls. <laughs> oh, oh God, he's moving. Oh, I can't aim lower. Okay. Most of your female demographic comes from Metal Gear Solid. It's true. Yeah. Thinking Raiden is hotter than Snake. Um, just watched your Metal Gear Solid video. Metal Gear Solid did in fact start as a remake of two. It's amazing like how many set pieces and stuff in Metal Gear Solid. Like that a lot of people, a lot of fans from like back in the day would associate with Metal Gear Solid are actually from Metal Gear 2. Right? 
Oh, shit. Come on. We're shooting down UFOs. <laughs> the name is Balls Deep Cholt Balls. Balls being my name is the dumbest bit ever. And it, the best part is that it, the the bit would not have stuck around if it wasn't for False's stream. When I showed up to her community night the one time and had forgotten to change my name back from Balls on Steam. And so everyone was just like, who is Balls? <laughs> and then I won. It was Crab Game for the record. So I show up with my Steam name as Balls. No one knows who I am. And then I win in Crab Game. And ever since then, my name being Balls on Steam has just stuck. Thank you for the sub. It's in French. I don't know how to read that. But thank you. Mm. Silver. Help. I can see chat. I think chat is the same. Call me crazy. I think chat might just be chat when translated. I could be wrong. Unless there, there's a French word, chat. So you're at 720. Wow. You're blessed. Also, false. Um. You, you didn't answer the question. Did you, you might not have heard. TM Sonic, thank you for the sub. Appreciate it. I think, I think I've seen comments from TM Sonic before, maybe. It sounds familiar. I think I have to move down for the rest of them. Oh yeah, yeah, they're down here. At least this one is. I don't even know where the others are. I can't aim lower. I can't. What's up? Uh, we would like to collectively formally request that my name in your Discord server get changed to Balls. Oh, there's more above. Oh God, this is gonna be a shit show <laughs> for the time attack. Oh wait, maybe I don't need to go down. Maybe I could just sit here, but finding all of them is, oh, there you are. That one was just simple. I just missed that one. So mostly just listen. Impressive. That's fair. I'm at 44 P60. Cowards. 44 or er, 44. Did I say 44 P? We go with it. It's 44 P. One forty four fits old better. You change your own name in our server? Well, clearly not. I don't know what you're... Are you trying to act like I made my name? Deep Chult Mech Guy IGN? Clearly I don't change my own name. Don't let her lie to you like this, chat. Deception at its finest. God. The thumbstick is so sensitive. Oh, sweet Jesus. Change my name in my server? Chat, she's saying no. I'm, I'm sick in my chat on you on this one. 
This isn't my fight to win. This is theirs. If you guys want balls IG or mech guy IGN, you have to fight for it. I won't be able to convince her. It has to be you. We can use this stream as training for the nine breaker streams. Yes. But hello, Raiden. Howdy. Howdy, question mark. I get to choose your name in my server. Oh, come on. This is gonna be a shit show in time attack. What? Oh, this one is crazy. They can't tell if I change it. Some of them are in there. You act like they're not. Some of them are in there. Oh, God. Okay. Um. I got this. Oh, also false. Just a bit ago, uh, we were talking about Paperhead. We were talking boomer shooter, like indie boomer shooter stuff and how good they are nowadays. Um, like how crazy hard the indie boomer shooter scene goes. Um, and I brought up Paperhead. No one knows that game. I don't know how you find it. You just found it scrolling itch, right? Like just genuinely browsing itch. Um, because it's indie. Well, yeah, but like in the boomer shooter scene, like we were talking about indie boomer shooters, and like everyone knew all of the ones that I was talking about, right? Because there's a lot of like you know, like if you keep up, you know what this game is, you know what that game is. But I brought up Paperhead, and no one had seen it. You have to get top time attack. I don't know. I, the only one that I tried so far, I did get the top. I got like the four second time. I, I'm going to do the practice mode for everything before I do the time attack. It is my my approach, my strategy here. Where's this last one? Because it's by one person. No, most most indie boom shoots are at least like the, the big ones that like everyone knows. It's just that that one it just hasn't had like any sort of like push or discussion around it really doesn't it does have social media i follow them on twitter and they have a steam page it's not like the game is where the hell is this it's not like it's just on itch either it's just for some reason, no one knows this one. And it's really cool. Like, it's a shame. Where the hell is it? Hello? Is this why it's the final stinger challenge? Because you'll never find the last one? Is it underneath? If it was underneath... We're fucked. I can't get underneath. Huh? Hold on, the stinger... There should be like a targeting square somewhere, wherever it is, right? Oh, <gasps> found it. Yeah. The hop is so good. Okay, that's the weapons done. Oh, now we have advanced weapon challenges. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right, let's see. Head for the goal. Maybe I should, maybe I should get some time attacks done. Maybe I could just split it up a little differently. Oh man. Dude, this 
Oh. Oh. It's not mandatory stealth for these SOCOM challenges. What can I say? I'm a natural. That'll be a pain in time attack. Definitely. Oh, I did not mean to do this. Ah, uh, the UI bugs with the controller. All right, let's just, we blast through again. It's just that easy. Hold on, let me get a couple more time attacks under my belt. Now, <laughs> the stingers have me a little, a little more worried about it. So let's see. And I can also see if I just, do I need to complete it in 25 or do I need to complete it in seven for the percentage? Oh shit. Reminding me of that stream so I can edit it. What, Paperhead? Okay, I got it this time. Check this out. I got the strategy. Oh no, there's the other guy. Oh no, we're good. I got seven seconds. I can't. Excellent snake. I can't test it when I'm this good at the game. <laughs> I'm at 24.3 right now. Let me try to do this in less, or sorry, in more than like 14 seconds if I can. If the guard pushes me into it. Oh yeah, for 14, I would not crawl. Yeah, okay. I, I would do the flip to get past them for less than that. Good work. You're as good as they said. Uh, did I have 24.3 or 24.6? I actually forgot in that amount of time because... Uh, whoops. Do you gain something in the main game by doing those? No, this was an expansion, like a standalone expansion. This was sold on a separate disc like a year later. I don't think so. Well, let me do the 14. Let me see if it goes up by like 0.3 or whatever. Whoops. <laughs> Oh, something interesting appears after beating everything in VR missions. Oh. What am I playing this on? Uh, PC. This is the native PC port that they did in like 2000. There we go. Excellent snake. Okay, I just have to complete them. I don't need to get first place. I just need to get first place. Some sketchy dragon, thank you for the sub. Appreciate it. Uh, I've got 40 seconds for this, man. Uh-oh. Oh, Shit. New plan. Oh God. Oh no. It's all falling apart. I cleared it though. Yeah, I got the percent, okay. We'd be here for months if you needed first place. It would be kind of bad if we needed first place. Definitely. That would be rough. This looks good. It looks great. And no one knows about it. I didn't know about it until False played it. And I'm like total ear to the ground on the indie boom shoot scene. Well, aside from the fact that I apparently didn't know that Cultic was out. That, that one is just, I don't know how I missed that. Because I really loved the demo back when I played it. 
found out today that Cultic got its full release already. But yeah, like I I really keep up with the indie boomer shooter scene and I had no idea about Paperhead until False played it. It's just not one that has gotten like any talks or publicity or anything. For whatever reason, like it it to me looks amazing. Fuck, I, I got a little too I was going too fast. For CV11 review, I would put money on it that he won't play Paperhead. Probably. He doesn't do many of the, the indie ones, does he? At least, oh shit, I should have just crawled it. I'm trying to go way too fast. Like, I don't need to go that fast. Um, Has he done many of the indie ones? I feel like he just does like the old AAA stuff or like random shovelware like Vivisector or something. Oh, way too fast again, god damn it. I got this. Called Mouse that looks really good too. I, I haven't heard of this one. When you say classic cartoon, are we talking kind of like a, like a Cuphead sort of thing? Oh yeah, like Cuphead. There, boom. It's such a cool style. How? Was that him or the laser? I might've been, I might've been too quick there. I genuinely, actually, I've got so much time here. Let me do this. It gives you a whole last minute for this. I fucked it up. Nope, you don't see anything. <laughs> if it works, it works. Good as they say. I'll take third place. That's all I need. Style is called rubber hose. I didn't even know that. Oh, shit. I'll have to look at mouse. Hold on. Could I just? No. Noted. I was like, what if I... Does this work? Oh yeah, you can just keep her going. You can absolutely just do that. Damn. Damn. That's fine. All right, this time. This time we go fast. Oops, too fast. What if I, hey, when, when the cogs start turning, normally something's gonna go wrong. If you haven't been around enough to know, now you know. When you can just hear the, the gears in my brain starting to work, that's normally when something's about to go wrong. Because normally I'm I'm cooking up some really dumb idea. The time I blew up the tanker, I, I'm not gonna lie. I may have hit the trip wire, like the laser for the, the tanker the first time through. Maybe. Uh, I played Sniper Elite 2 and 3. Sorry, V2 and 3. And I own the original on Steam, but I've never touched it. I picked up the original for like 90 cents because it's just shovelware at this point. They did a fourth one, right? Oh, and I've played, um... What's it? Is it Nazi Zombie Army? Is that what it's called? I played the first, like zombie spin-off that they did, but only the first one. I 
I swear they added a camera or two here. I were there always this many? Oh my god. Bullshit. Bullshit. Okay, I can't push it with these guys at all. Huh? Yeah, I don't think... Oh, did I do like a little wiggle? Like right at the end? That, that would do it. That's on me. That one's my bad. Oh, ow. Is that something in my jacket? Something just poked me when I put my arm up. My arms are also so sore because my buddy who I have gotten addicted to Tekken 8 along with me. He, uh, he told me the other day, he was like, dude, I found this mashup on YouTube of Heat Haze from Tekken 7 and uh, final stand, like the Tekken 8, like, opening song slash, like, the final fight song. Someone, like, spliced them together and did, like, this really good mashup of the two of them. My last stand, thank you. And he was like, I'm telling you, I worked out to that song and I've never had such a good workout. And I tried it. And I hit arms to that mashup. And now my arms are incredibly fucking sore. <laughs> he was right. It, it was such a good workout song. My arms are so sore. I, like, I did the same thing, but I guess I just went way harder than I usually do. Sometimes you just need the right song. It was, it was a good workout. Would recommend. If you want to destroy your arms. Uh, that, that's the way to do it. Very sore. I just gotta slow it down for this one. You know, like, sure, I'm on a timer. But it's also giving me a minute and 20 seconds here. Which is plenty of time to take it slow. You just wait. This is my moment. I'm pushing it, but all we have to do is complete it. We don't need to get the high. What What even is the first place on this one? 23 seconds? How? How? You'd have to optimize that so much to get 23 seconds on it. That's insane. No way that I was going to do that. I got 35 on this one. Don't worry about it. Whose footprints are these? <laughs> Excellent snake. There we go. Just run through. How would you even do that? Makes a lot of arm destroying songs. I have some Lamb of God on my workout playlist. I'm not a huge Lamb of God guy. Person. Oh shit. I can't go that fast. It's one of those bands that, like, I've got some stuff from them, but I've never been as into them as a lot of metalheads are. Huh? Stupid bitch. I'm out. See ya. I'm actually surprised that worked. I feel like he should have seen me there. I really feel like he should have seen me on that one. But I'll take what I can get. Shit. Too far away. The idea was there. You listen to Static X? No. You know who I've been really into recently, metal-wise, though, is um, 
Dark Tranquility. Like, I've, I've had some stuff of theirs for a while, but like more recently, I'm kind of just listening to their stuff like a lot. And it's so good. They've got such a good sound going. Oh, shit. Come on, man. Like, I, I, I've had like their big popular songs over the years, but I only just kind of like explored a little more like through their albums and man. I've just been binging the shit out of Dark Tranquility. <laughs> I've just been listening to it all the time. Do you? Let's try it again. This time. No, you turn so fast. So fast. Okay. I know that I'm not supposed to do it by standing right next to the guy and knocking. But with the right execution. Oh, dude, you know what I should do? Same idea. No, okay. It's got to be a little tighter. I got this. The, the idea is there. Now we just need the execution on it. The idea is the easy part. Like that. That's what we need to be doing. Okay, so the sliding along the wall thing has never been my strong suit. Uh, it's always been one of the MGS1 things that I struggle with a little bit. Is controlling the wall slide. It's a little loosey-goosey in MGS1. There's a reason that they added the thing where you can use like L2 and R2 to slide along the walls. Oh, dude, even better idea. Oh, even better idea. It's a little more bold of me. <laughs> it actually worked too. That's incredible. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. No knocking needed. Now that's the move. I saw them both turn the other way and I was like, there's just enough time for this. What was that noise? Who's that? That was cool. I'm actually kind of shocked that it worked on the first try. I wasn't going to do that. But if it works, it works. I might actually have to be, oh no. No patience needed. Never mind. Uh oh. One. We go. I'm I'm actually shocked that I was able to pull that off quickly enough. The guys seeing me as I hit the finish too scared me. Since December 23rd, but they have a demo V2. Oh. Yeah, I mean it seemed pretty early when you played it. For sure. Because they had like a few levels and like a couple weapons and like two songs. So I could tell that like what they were working with was pretty early. It wasn't quite as far along. Like, I've, you know, I've been around the, the boom shoot scene. Uh, I've played the demos. You know, I've played some demos in my day in, in that indie scene. Like that side of the indie scene, I mean. Um, and it, you can kind of tell like how far along they are. Like when I played Cultic, I could tell that they had gotten a lot done already. The guy who was making it just because there were like seven weapons in that demo. And the one level that was available was like 10 minutes long and just packed to the brim with like secrets and Easter eggs and all this. We're clearing missions like there's no tomorrow. Yeah, people said this would be bad. I was like, I don't know. I think this will be a couple streams to get through VR missions. Like, sure, it takes a few hours, but it's not like it's an insane grind or anything. Yeah. Bum, bum, bum. Impressive, Snake. That was actually a pretty good time.
for a mission with so many options. I seem to have had the right idea. I can say it's the best series I've ever touched, hands down. Whoa. Ooh. I could see that opinion. I could see that. Wait, wait, wait. So what games have you played? Because everyone kind of has their ones that they like skip and don't skip and all that. So I'm curious what, what you've played and, and skipped. Did you start with Solid 1? Are you just doing like the Solid games? Or did you do Damn. Metal Gear 1 and 2? <laughs> Damn. Stream? Oh, stream did drop. That was a big one. Okay. I got 40 whole seconds for this. What was that? What was that? It does, like, I agree that it's it's not like any, like, it has such a unique identity. It, it doesn't feel like anything else. Oh, you get some time back for every bullet you don't use. Interesting. MGS1, then I played through Twin Snakes just to see. Now I'm playing Sons of Liberty. Interesting. Couldn't tell since I'm on 144p. Hey, false. If you put it to 240p, that's actually the original native resolution. So, you know, it wouldn't be that bad. All things considered. Oh, wait, I actually have to kill them all this time. I forget. It delays already at, at 144. Sounds like your work has great internet. Actually, I've seen your work internet. Doesn't it have like crazy high upload speed for no goddamn reason? I mean, they might think that they need it. it, it from what I remember, I remember seeing it and thinking like, oh my God, the ISP absolutely like conned them into thinking that they need that much upload. Because there's no, like, they, they don't. There's no way they need it. Impressive Refresh my memory. What kind of upload did you have? It's going against YouTube right now for some reason. Mm. See, we're already at 30% chat. Realism with absolute insanity with a little bit of humor. The tone is all over the place in these games in a good way Like in a way that's really like wild and just fun But the tone is all over the damn place Good work. You're as good as they said I still haven't beaten the mission called VR Mission near the end. It's tough. How tough? What's your internet up and down? I have gigabit. So I, I get a thousand up. Well, the plan, the internet plan is a thousand up, a thousand down. That's not actually what I get. I would say that I get like 800 each in like reality, like the actual speeds that I get if I run a test or something. 400 uploads. Yeah, so let me put into context how much upload that is, okay? I stream to YouTube in 1440p, 60 frames per second, right? And to do that, that requires like 20 megabits of upload. 20. Someone conned your work false into thinking that they needed like 500 upload. Like, the ISP totally uh, convinced them that they would need that much when you have no re- Like, I don't- They don't need that. Like, what are you uploading? Good work. You're as good as that you need said. it to be that fast. 
I don't pay the bill. I know you don't pay the bill. I'm just, I think it's funny that they got convinced that they needed that is all. Uh-oh. Something you missed? BB was a... No, I didn't miss that. It's just, it, it's not like important. I, I try to just run through the essentials because otherwise, dude, the Metal Gear videos would be hours long if I ran through everything. Ba -ba -ba. Ten or more rooms? Oh. 600, 100? Yeah, even that, that's a lot. Like, for just general use. Like, Gigabit right now is pretty overkill. But... The ISP was like, oh yeah, we could, we could do it for cheap because you know, we've, you've been a, a client for so long. We could, we could do it at a discount. And I was like, I mean, sure, why not? I have no idea how the camera didn't see me. Where's my auto aim? I was going so fast. But hello, Daniel. Okay. Chat, I need you to like stream for more box action. More high tension, high stakes, cardboard box action. Shit. But it feels good looking at those numbers go sky high. You know what it is great for? Is uploading the videos. That is when I like actually get to use that much internet bandwidth and it's amazing how fast it, I can upload a video. Now, YouTube's processing is a whole other story. I'm on priority processing and it still takes forever. Like even on priority, because my file sizes are so large, because I do 1440 and I render out at like lossless quality and all that, um, it takes YouTube forever to like compress the videos down and you know like split up all the resolutions and all that. That's what that's what they're doing when they're processing the video. Um, that still takes ages, but that's just on YouTube's like server side. Uh, on my end, uploading videos is so fast, despite how, like, comically large my file sizes can be. Like, hold on. Damn. Putting out too much content I can't follow. You don't need to follow all of it. That's that's the, the whole plan. I put out too much. Intentionally. <laughs> I'm joking. Here, I'm going to have to restart my game because it's going to do, like, that bug with the... Uh, with the mouse cursor always being on screen. That happens every time I alt tab this, but this is my mod launcher, by the way. Say hello. Um, let's see, like the acid two video shouldn't be that big. I wouldn't think. No, it's not that big. What, what is like a really big one? Oh, my MGS three video, just the raw video uncompressed is 47 gigabytes. Yeah, that, that's, I was like, which one is going to be really big? And I realized it would be MGS3. Yeah, that video is 47 gigs. <laughs> Uncompressed. Uh, are there any? My, my Ace Combat Assault Horizon video is 46 gigs that I put up last week. That video is 46 gigs because there's so much on screen all the time. What about like Armored Core 6? We did that video ages ago, but like how big is that? 45? Yeah. That all makes sense. Yeah, my, my video file sizes are like comically large because of 1440, 60, and uncompressed and everything. But I can upload them in like five minutes. Because <laughs> internet go burr. Takes forever for YouTube to process them once they're uploaded, but at least the upload goes quick. 
At least it's not 4K60 someday. You just wait until I'm crazy enough. How much storage do you have to keep all of them? A bit. To save on processing time, maybe the YouTube recommendation are way outdated. You might be able to. The only time that I get kind of upset about how long it takes for video to process is when I'm trying to get it up for like patrons and stuff. Because otherwise, like I schedule stuff out a day ahead or more, depending on when the video gets done for like public release. But for patrons and stuff, I am kind of sitting there and I'm like, okay, I want to get this out like as soon as I can. As as and say. I'm just waiting. Like I made my thumbnail, like everything's done. I just have to wait for the HD version to be ready to go before I can like send it to them. One billion gigabytes, I wish. Since you were late this week, is the new video still Monday? There's no way, there's no way. I, I can't even do that. Not even my immune to burnout ass can do that. I just can't, there's no way. Well, I could if I didn't stream, probably. If I got an extra like 16 hours to work on it, I could probably have it for Monday. But I'm not doing that, I won't, I'm streaming. Time to grind. No, at this point, it's like Monday upload is nice if I can get it. But until I can like slowly recover. um, Uh oh. Like from just the schedule having fallen behind as much as it did, which to be fair this week, it was because I scheduled a bunch of extra shit that I should not have. Um, I just, I underestimated the, the scope of the video. If I cancel one stream, I might. No, probably not. He'll be uploading on Friday. Well, at this point, like, it's kind of just like, yeah, it goes up when it's ready. Uh-oh. Can you not pull to him? Oh my god, shit. <laughs> Me fumbling with the controls trying to fight the auto-aim. Oh my god! It keeps, like, that's not me doing that back and forth shit. That's actually just the game trying to pull to the guy that's behind the wall. I'm trying to pull it to the left, but it's pulling towards him, and it's just going all over the place. <laughs> that actually wasn't me. Sweet Jesus. Okay. Who's that? The game decides where where Snake is gonna aim sometimes. Oh. What you'll think about MGS4? I know that MGS4 is typically a controversial one. I know there's a lot of people who really like it. There's a lot of people that really don't like it. Knock and run, that's what I was about to do. I was gonna do this. Um, there we go. I was trying to like stick to the wall and instantly knock, but apparently just doesn't work like that. Auto aim any day, thank you. Yeah, I kind of have to stick for like a second and then do it. Uh oh. I don't have enough bullets. I can still kill him. No, I can't.
Oh my god, go! Snake! That's one way to do it. That's one way to do it. SOCOM challenge. Complete. Has the world record and longest cutscene in gaming. Well, I heard that the intro alone in MGS4 is like 40 plus minutes before you actually play the game. And someone said that the, like the ending cutscene is the longest one. Is that the one that holds the record? Is it the ending cutscene? Like where it wraps everything up? Oh, I got way too close to you. I, I was kind of like peeking at the map, but not really watching it. GG, easy. Who's that? Installation. I'm not going to be playing it on a PS3. So that should help. Oh, but I'm going to be dumping it. So maybe not. That'll be fine. What was that noise? I have already secured my my copy. I, I had a buddy who had it laying around from like years ago. And I've already secured that. I haven't dumped it yet, but I have it sitting around somewhere. Actually, it might be in my car right now. I think I left it in my car, to be honest. But I got it. Oh, fuck. Oh no. Okay, this is the first one. Actually, 40 minutes of gameplay. Jesus Christ. It's like 70 minutes of back to back cutscenes. Jesus. Well, Kojima definitely, like, he, he has gone in that direction where he's at this point he is just embraced like I am making movies these aren't even games anymore like I'm making movies it's not on vims for some reason why would you be looking I I know of of vims but why would you even be looking what was that noise? What was that noise? What was that noise? No! I was trying to thread the needle there. I got all freaked out. There was no option to install the whole game to the hard drive. It had to install a level, then once it finished, delete the level. How big is the game? Because PS3 used Blu-rays. Oh no, you had it digitally. My ass was... You know how nowadays consoles have to like burn... Like they have to dump the disc contents to the console and like uncompress them? Like there's an actual install process on, uh, on like Xbox One, PS4, etc. nowadays. All right, Xbox Series PS5. Can you tell that I don't own either of the new consoles? Um. But yeah, I, I remember back in the day when that wasn't a thing, when consoles didn't have to like actually install the contents of the disc before playing it. I remember that being the thing that like when I upgraded to Xbox One and PS4 back in like. Jesus, 2013. Um, I was so confused when I like put in my disc for whatever it was, the first thing. I think it would have been Forza 5. Would have been the first thing that I installed. I think it was Xbox One first that I set up. Because I was a 360 kid more than I was a PS3 kid because the PS3 sucked. I'm just terrible at this, at this one. I'm struggling to get this done quick enough. The fact that I have to kill all the enemies makes this... A little wild, and that he sits right there, like off the bat, doesn't make my life any easier. Oh, 
Oh, you know what I actually just saw recently, chat? I saw an update from uh, the Harbor Masters team, who are the guys who did the Ocarina of Time PC port. Uh, and they were sharing like some screenshots and just some general info about like what they've learned and like where they're at with the Majora's Mask PC port. And it looks like it's coming along. I will probably replay Ocarina of Time and do Majora's Mask whenever they manage to get it done. Any reason to replay Ocarina of Time is a good reason. Did Xbox 360 have better graphics? It did. The 360 had more powerful hardware than the PS3. Uh, so even though you, you'd have games that were running like the same assets and everything on both systems, you would see like a lot of PS3 games didn't use anti-aliasing because they just didn't have the computing power available to add that on. Um, a lot of the time they were using lower native resolutions than the 360 version. Like if we're talking about games that were on both platforms, typically the PS3 games would look worse than the 360 games. Like if you're talking about like a Red Dead Redemption or something like that. Red Dead Redemption is a notorious one. The PS3 port of Red Dead was really bad compared to the 360 port. It looked worse. It ran worse. It, the PS3 version of Red Dead is, is kind of a notorious one. Playing Ocarina of Time like this is so good. The PC port's amazing. Like just getting... Um, What's it? They use, uh, I can't think of the term right now. What was that? They use, what's the term for, oh, interpolated frames. They use frame interpolation on the PC port so that it looks like the game is running in 60 FPS when it's not, like, so that it retains the game speed. Um, You're as good as they said. but it looks like it's running in 60 to the eyeball. And dude, it's so smooth to play Ocarina of Time at 60 FPS. You don't know it until you feel it because Ocarina of Time natively ran at 24 frames per second because the frame rate was tied to the game clock. So even if you were like emulating or something, you were just stuck playing at that frame rate. You couldn't raise it without causing issues in game. Um. But man, using the interpolated frames on the PC port and having it seemingly run at 60 FPS is so, so smooth. And like the game, I know that you can mod it with like HD textures and stuff that people have made for it. I never did because to me, Ocarina of Time is one of those games that will never look bad. Like it's just one of those games that looks good because the art is so strong. And it's got that low poly charm to it. And it's definitely not because I'm nostalgic from my childhood. Has nothing to do with it. Can't have anything to do with it. Definitely not. What score would I give Ocarina of Time? I've said before that uh, if I ever did formally review Ocarina of Time, it would probably be like the highest score that I ever give out. And I, I don't see myself ever scoring a game higher. It would probably be like a 9.8 or like a 9.9, .9, genuinely. Because it's it's hard to find things to complain about in Ocarina of Time. Like the, the camera controls are bad. Like nowadays when you go back and replay it, right? The camera stuff is a pain in the ass. Like the Z targeting and all that is not fun. But like, aside from that, it's really, it's hard to fault Ocarina of Time. It, it really is. It, it's... Are we talking about a PC port in quotes? No, so a team of modders made it so that if you have like a dumped version of the actual game, like from a legal copy, um... You can essentially put the assets from the original game into this PC port that they put together. It's a fan-made port. It's not official. If you don't, I'm, I'm trying to explain. Uh, 
if you have a legal copy, you can dump the assets into this PC port, into the code base that they put together for it to run on. So technically, it's not redistributing the game on their end. So Nintendo has no legal grounds to take them down is why that's important detail. Um, because you have to have a legal copy of the game for the port to even work. Uh, but you can dump the, the game's assets from your legal copy of it. And it has all of the code rewritten like one to one with a bunch of like quality of life improvements and stuff. And you can play Ocarina of Time natively on PC, like in 4K with 60 frames per second and like nothing breaks because they put all this work in to make it work. And it's insane how good it is. Like it's so good. They made a PC version from the ground up. They legitimately, I'm not bullshitting you, they line by line reverse engineered the game's original code. Like they looked at the game and they said, we need to write this from scratch to make it play exactly how it did. And they spent like two years as a team doing that and they have it working perfectly. Like they legitimately just reverse engineered the entirety of Ocarina of Time. Has been ported to Switch and Wii U. Yeah, they, they made it so that if you dump that port onto like a modded Wii U or Nintendo Switch, you can play it on there. And currently they're working on Majora's Mask. They're doing the same thing where they're just going in and like line by line, they're trying to make it work exactly how it did back on N64. I have such an insane amount of... When I, when I say... Because I've said this a lot on stream before. When I say that like... Video game modding scenes give me faith in humanity. I fucking mean it. The fact that people enjoy those games so much that they put in hours and hours of like genuine labor to make the games playable in a slightly better form and they put their work out there for free once they're done. Okay, that's... Video game modding is actually like just the most wholesome shit when you break down what it actually is. It's incredible. Do you really need a genuine copy? You need a genuine copy. Wink wonk. never really need no 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 you guys you need you definitely need an original copy absolute you do trust me oh shit I, it's the same two spots every time, but I'm trying to run it through fast enough. It makes it really hard with the time trial on some of these. Just the sneaking ones were fine. Now that I need to sneak and clear out the entire map, it's gotten a little trickier. Is Master of Arena Disc 2 even worth playing? Um, it's kind of like, you can check it out and play it like as much as you want to. Don't dedicate to like playing the entire thing because then you'll just hate yourself by the end of it. Like just play it as much as you want to play it. And then once you're done, just move on. You can mess around with it if you're looking for just more arena fights. Like that's exactly what you'll get and it's fine. But there are yeah. like 150 extra arena fights on there. So unless you really love the arena and look like I'm the guy with Armored Core, like the arena is my favorite part in like almost every Armored Core game. And I think that disc two of Master of Arena gets to the point where it's just not fun anymore. 
Like, just play it as much as you want to play it, but it's it's not necessary at all. No. It's there if you want more, but none of it is like you need to have played it. The Metal Gear 2 music on this, like I know the sneaking missions had the Metal Gear 1 music and that was great. Impressive but I think Metal Gear 2 had a way better soundtrack than Metal Gear 1. Just a professional. Impressive sneak. How to swap discs in Duck Station? Uh, you should probably figure it. It's not that bad to, to change discs in Duck Station. Um, but if you're getting into Duck Station and you're gonna play some real PS1 classics like outside of just Armored Core, um, like how you should absolutely go back and play the entire Resident Evil trilogy, in my opinion, complete unbiased opinion, um, for Resident Evil 2 specifically, if you were to do that, which again, you should, um, you'll need to disc swap on that. So it's definitely worth figuring it out. There were a lot of PS1 games that came on two discs. So like, if you're gonna be digging into like, uh, Resident Evil 2, Metal Gear Solid, um, Legacy of Kane, I think. I'm not 100% on that. Don't quote me on that. I think it had two discs. Oh, I thought you were dead. I don't want to fry my brain too much. It's not that bad. Like, once you've got the basic feel for it down, once, once you know what you're doing, like, just navigating around it, it's not that bad. People, a lot of people make emulations seem like it's a lot harder than yeah. it is. Dino Crisis? Look, I I'm talking like the, the big ones. W once you start getting a little crazier, you know, you've got like your Dino Crisis, uh, your your Parasite Eve. Like there's, there's definitely more that's worthwhile on PS1. But if you're talking like big classics, you gotta do like Resident Evil, Silent Hill, Metal Gear, um, Crash Bandicoot, probably. Crash Bandicoot. He was PlayStation's mascot for ages. Like for years, he was PlayStation's mascot. I would say he's he's up there. Kodelka had four discs. Why have I just started hearing about this game like out of nowhere? Like all of a sudden, everyone's talking about Kodelka. I legitimately had never heard of it once until like a month ago. And now I've like, everyone seems to be talking about this, this game. Okay, so. <clears throat> I'll explain. I tried to knock on the wall, but I had already placed my C4. So when I hit the melee button, C4 go boom. <laughs> I was trying to lure him over, but I didn't realize that it was just gonna blow up anyway. crossover series called Another Century. Yeah, someone in the comments at one point brought it up. Even though turn-based horror doesn't really work. Turn-based horrors... It can work. It's just... It's not as scary when you have all that time to, like, sit there and, like, process things, you know? Like, it, there, there's a bit of a, a fundamental... Uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Impressive sneak. Ah, shit. What's the word I'm looking for? Disconnect. Disconnect. There. Tenchu. I still haven't played Tenchu or Front Mission. And I'm kind of like, not the PS1 guy, but I'm I'm kind of like one of the PS1 guys. 
Like, I'm one of the guys who will be on stream every day being like, you guys know what was the greatest console? The PlayStation 1. Little gray toilet bowl. That thing kicked ass. Um. He just forgot, apparently. Fear and hunger. <gasps> Sorry, what? Hmm. Impressive. Must have been the wind. Well, you guys hear anything? World of Horror? I don't know World of Horror. Ba, ba, ba. Never say that name in my chat again. Fear and Hunger was one of those games that I just, I, I sat here on the internet every single day. And I was like, why, why this game? Like, this isn't even a game. This is just, this is just. Fear and Hunger is what like people who haven't played the Souls games think the Souls games are when they're not at all. Yeah. Fear and Hunger is like, oh, you did something? <laughs> Fuck you, you're dead. Save file over, restart. Oh, you're getting comfy. You're starting to get in the flow of the game. Here's the most fucked up thing you've seen in your life. Are you shocked? Did it work? Have we have we surprised you? This is horror. This is horror. Impressive. Terrible. Dog shit game. In my opinion, personally. Like awful horror. Just pure like putting the most inhumane shit possible in front of you just for a shock value reaction. Uh, like, just awful, terrible horror. Uh, awful game design. Like, the worst game design. It's just like, you do anything, you die. And it's intentional. Like, it's just supposed to be like the impossible RPG. It's, it's just, it's a bad game. It's just a bad game. What about Scorn? Scorn is like, I wish Scorn was more than it was. Scorn's like art style and imagery was insane. But Scorn's gameplay was not good. Like it, it wasn't much of a game until it really like got into the combat and then I played Scorn on um on hard mode when we played it when it came out because I was like oh it, it's being advertised as survival horror I'm pretty good at survival horror I'll play it on hard mode whenever they did do like actual combat at least on hard mode it wasn't balanced at all like the enemies had more health than you had ammo to dish out. And it wasn't really survival horror because you were required to kill everything. At least on hard mode. Running past enemies was not a possibility on hard mode. You had to kill them. But there wasn't really enough ammo to kill them. So I had to use that little weird like chomping animation all the time that was completely unsafe. And the enemies, like if you used it, the enemies just hit you. You were just dead. You were just guaranteed to take damage if you ever used the melee in that game. Because the hitboxes were really bad. Like, the imagery and, and the direction and stuff was really cool. Impressive. And Scorn... If we're talking... If you brought up Scorn because of, like... When I was joking about, like, here's the most fucked up thing you've ever seen in your life. Are you scared? Are you shocked? Scorn, like, walks that line... Where they put in, like, some really disturbing imagery without being like completely overt about it. Fear and hunger is like, oh, you tried to take your turn. Um, you just got <clears throat> assaulted. <clears throat> Fear and hunger is like completely beyond the line. The scorn was like, oh, here's some imagery that without like just telling you outright, 
like this is an allegory for pregnancy and childbirth, but like Fear and Hunger lacks all the nuance required to actually like approach that kind of topic in horror. Like doing body horror with pregnancy stuff. If you got like some nuance and some subtlety with it, works, works wonders. It's really, really uncomfortable. But Fear and Hunger, ha it's just, uh. shit. Just an interactive tool music video without music playing. Probably, yeah. Like, no, and for me, games that just play pure shock value when it comes to stuff like that, will it's just, it's not gonna be my thing ever. It's so, to me, it's just incredibly lazy, uh, writing wise and stuff. Like you gotta, there, there is that line that you've kind of got to like teeter totter on if you really want to approach those things and like use them to kind of put some discomfort in the player or viewer like for like movies and stuff too, right? Y you walk that line instead of just like outright saying it. It's so that you kind of get like that unease, that, that little bit of like uh, disturbance in the in the end user but games like fear and hunger are just like oh yeah here's here's this thing you uncomfortable you should be what is wrong with eastern europe to keep making shit like this kind of game it, it is it is absolutely in that category i would agree depending on the player that's true for me, I'm just like, what is this? Ow. Oh God. He's never getting out of this level. It's hard because you have to kill the enemies with the FAMAS. Like to get the end point to show up, you have to kill all the enemies. But as soon as I shoot, I raise the alert, right? And when I raise the alert, I can't see the vision cone on the on the turrets. And I have very little health to work with. This one is hard. This one is hard. I'm kind of thinking like maybe if I could stealth to the end, Nope. There's just, you're supposed to shoot while you go through, right? You're, you're just, you're supposed to use the FAMAS. I'm trying to like find a way to make this easier and kind of get through it more quickly, but you just, you have to, you have to engage with the combat for this. I laid down because, okay. <laughs> I tried to run and shoot, but I, I pressed the, um, X button before the square button. It's almost as if the, the USSR, yeah, it's almost like being under the USSR was a really, um, not good time. Apologies, Marxists. Ow. Man, okay. What if, but how am I gonna do this during the ch I'm trying to think ahead. I'm like, how do you even do this quickly? Cause I could do this where like, I kind of split it up. Like, you know, I take a group at a time, like this, 
But when I get to the time trial, how the hell am I gonna do this? Because I can't let the evasion timer run down. I don't know how long it's gonna give me. I'm assuming I won't have that much time. Okay. Thank you, auto aim. As always. That works. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was the final Famas one. That's why. I was like, bro, this is so hard. Like, what? All right. Grenade time. We're almost at 39%. We're just shy of 39. We're making big progress. Huh. Beautiful. Elegant. Clean. Impressive. Uh oh. Hmm. It decided to be nice to me that time. No bug this time. I hit next mission without thinking, and I was like, whoops. Oh. Ha Take that! <laughs> okay. They put him that far down. Literally just to, uh, to have him fly out of the hole like that. And you know what? I respect it. Oh, they're doing it again. Man, this is gonna be hard with a time limit on it. Oh my god. MGS Golf? That's kinda how it feels, so I'm not gonna lie. Oh shit, I dropped a grenade. That should kill him. I've already hit him once. Oh, that got him? I'm not complaining. Metal Golf Solid. 39.3. Ever closer to the 40. Aha! Bitches. Take this. And this. Uh oh. Oh shit. Oh shit. They can actually shoot back here. Aha! See you later. That one was beautiful. These grenade ones, these advanced grenade ones are going to be a bitch on, uh, on time trial. These, like, needing to do those lineups really quickly is going to suck so much ass. And how far did that grenade go? Hey, I'll take what I can get. Hello. Take this. Oh, I've screwed myself. Oh my God. Thank you. No way he's not dead. These grenade ones are hard. Honestly, the, the final challenge for every advanced one has been kind of tricky. Like this is where, this is where things get turned up a little bit. Oh my god, I'm getting chased. Oh my god. 
Haha! Uh -huh. Uh oh. Stupid bitch. He fell right from my trap. The let me drop yeah. a grenade at your feet by getting shot trap. Impressive snake. That's using your brain if I've ever seen it. 40% Super Bomberman is looking kind of different. Man, are they ever going to do something with Bomberman again? What happened to Super Bomberman? Where has he been? Walk into it. Oh, you son of a bitch. Oop. Please don't kill me. Oh my God, please. Ah. Oh, what was that? Ah, oh, the letter, the forbidden letter. Last year? They came out with one last year? Super safe. Hey, safety is important, okay? There's no way, right? There is no way. There's a way, oh. There's a forbidden letter. There's a couple of them. Where the bot, to avoid certain types of oh, spam, God. the bot filters a couple of letters specifically if they're put on their own like that. You have so much knowledge about this game. What, with the grenade drop? I learned it on the spot. That wasn't like legacy knowledge. That was just on the spot. I saw that when I was getting shot, I was dropping them. So I ran up to the guy with one in my hand. That was on the fly. <laughs> Stupid bitch. Oh my God. Oh my God. Persona 2 is going to be a pain in the ass if he does that series. Why? Why would Persona 2 specifically be a pain? I feel like they would all be a pain in the ass. Why specifically Persona 2? only localized one for PS1? Oh. What? Impressive snake. You need to play two whole games for one story. need to scavenge the claymores. Oh. Found one. Got your ass. Ha <laughs> ha! Shit! 
<laughs> I ran right into it. I ran right into it. We go backwards. Ooh. Oh, I take the path that he's taking, don't I? You guys, I I am I'm good at games, okay? I have basic gamer literacy, I swear. Oh. Holy shit. Good idea to wait. Excuse me. Why does it sound like Zelda? It's Metal Gear 2 music. It's remixed Metal Gear 2 music. Okay, that was a close one. Yeah. That was a close one. Impressive sneak. From what I've heard, it seems like Persona 3 is one of those games where every version that you play, like regardless of what you choose, is going to have a downside. Like there's no single like definitive version of the game that is best to play. At least to my understanding from what I've heard people say. Hello. Oh yeah, that's it. All right. Oh, ow. Impressive sneak. Have him walk around the minefield. Oh, I could have done that. Let me guess. It's not a straight line through. The oh no, it it absolutely is. <laughs> Which is why P3 Reload is really disappointing. Yeah, it seems like even the recent remake is still not like the perfect version. Which, like, this is my thing that I say all the time. And, like, my big thing that I've been saying about, like, the Master Collection, right? When everyone is like, why why do you complain about the Master Collection, the Metal Gear Master Collection so much? And it's like, when you put out something and you're like, this is the Master Collection. Like, this is the way to play all of these games now from this point on. And then almost every game in the collection has something that makes it like to where you're better off playing a different version. That's kind of upsetting because like this should have been like the big bundle of games to like get people into Metal Gear who haven't played it before, give people like the one stop shop to revisit Metal Gear, you know, whatever. That's what this should have been. But that's not what it is. That's why I bitch so much about what happened with the Master Collection. And what will probably inevitably happen with Master Collection Volume 2 as well, but... We'll get there when we get there. What more do you want from a Master Collection? For it to be the best version of every game available. Like in the term... or sorry, in terms of MGS 1, 2, and 3, for all three of those games, there's a better version that was already available years ago, right? 
Like none of those games in the Master Collection are in their like best available version state, I guess is the way to put it. Uh, where the hell do I shoot this? Oh my God, he's above me. <laughs> what? Hold on. Um. What exactly are the problems? Shoot the right side. Rockets go up. Oh, they do. Oh, OK, that's news to me. Hello. I don't even want to go that side. I want to go here. OK, that's news to me. Um, It's like with Metal Gear Solid 1, MGS1 is literally just running in an emulator that for some reason they put like a bilinear filter over and capped the resolution at 240p. So like if you play MGS1 on the Master Collection, the gameplay is fine. The gameplay isn't like hurt by any means, but you're getting like a worse visual experience than what's available on this PC port that I'm playing right here, where a lot of people even think that I'm just emulating MGS1 when I'm playing it on stream. And like when I did the video, a lot of people thought that that's what I did. I'm not. I'm, I'm using the PC edition that came out in 2000, like 20 years ago, that just works better than what's in, or looks better than what's in the master collection, right? Um, MGS2 is probably, it, it fared the best out of the three, where I think the only like quote unquote better version would be, is it substance or subsistence? I can't keep them straight. Um, and even then, it's only because there's just like some additional like little secrets and stuff that got cut from the the remaster. Oh, actually, MGS2 had a bunch of its cutscene footage replaced because of like licensing stuff as well. I forgot about that until just now, actually. Um, MGS3 got it the worst, in my opinion. Uh because of all the new like bugs and issues that are in the MGS3 port of the or the master collection version between like the awful audio like even with the ability to lower it now because like we all laughed about how fucking loud the game was when it first came out and the fact that there wasn't even a volume slider on day 1 like that was funny but now the issue is that they've compressed the fuck out of the audio so the audio that's there, you can turn it down so that it's not blowing out your speakers or your headphones anymore. But as it is, oh my God, that's amazing. Oh, one of them survived, God damn it. Um, all of the audio is just super low quality and crunchy now compared to if you were just go back and play the PS2 versions or the HD collection version on PS3. Um, the audio is significantly better on literally any version that isn't the Master Collection. It might not be noticeable yeah. if you've only ever played the Master Collection Impressive. version, but it's really bad. Like, especially there's videos doing like the side by side where they cut back and forth between the two for audio. And it's crazy how much worse it sounds. And there's like some frame rate issues for some reason on uh, on the, what's it? Xbox and PC version of the Master Collection with MGS3. I think MGS2 has them as well. I don't know, lack of personal experience on that one. I can't, I know that MGS3 has some weird frame rate issues, unless you're on like a really high end PC and just on Xbox, it has frame rate problems somehow. Like they they managed to make it so that the game dips in frames on like mid end PCs, modern PCs and like the Xbox Series X. I think the PS5 version actually how's the switch version in that regard? Uh, Terry, you just said, oh, worse frame rates than PS2. Oh, yeah, MGS2. Never mind. I was like, I just saw something about uh, the switch version in chat. There it is. 
Yeah, the frame rate issues on MGS 2 and 3 that I've heard about. It's just like, you could play the Master Collection, and what's nice about the Master Collection is having everything in one place, obviously. But in terms of, like, each individual experience, there's a better version out there. Is, like, my problem with the- and it's why I haven't used the Master Collection for streams or for videos. It's why I've been sourcing other versions. Well, MGS3 was... I could have used the HD version of MGS3 and 2 to that extent, but... For those... Uh, especially MGS3, but because I was going to do it for 3, I did it for 2 as well. I wanted to stick to the original releases for the reviews. Like, I wanted to play the games as they were originally designed and put out, rather than, like... Play them with improvements that were added years later, if that makes sense. I'm more interested about how the games came out to begin with than, like, what's the best available version if I go to play it now. It's more interesting in, in my mind to go back and look at how they originally were released. I'm sourcing other versions. No, genuinely, I, I've been bumming copies off of buddies of mine who have them. Okay, you guys want to know something? <laughs> one of my buddies here. One of my buddies here. Uh, his family owns a pawn shop chain in the state. Like, it's a statewide pawn shop chain. They have a ton of locations. His dad owns it. Um, MGS2. Sons of Liberty. I got a copy from him to use. He, he had one in the shop and he let me use it for the video. Because I, I didn't have anyone around here that I knew personally who had a Sons of Liberty copy laying around, like the original original. So I ran out of ideas and I was like, hey, do you by chance have one of these in the shop? And sure as shit, they did. And so I bummed it. He didn't make me pay for it or anything. <laughs> I used it for the review, I gave it back. I, I'm not speaking in quotes when I say sourcing other versions. I hate piracy. I worked in dev and design before going full-time for YouTube, before leaving dev and design. Because A, sitting there staring at code and not knowing why it's not working all day is not fun mental health-wise. It's just not. And B, um, the politics of it, like between uh, the studio and the publishers and all that, I couldn't stand it. I was out. But I am, unless there's like no way to, like unless it's abandonware, um, I, I am strongly against piracy. Do they have PS1 Ghost in the Shell game? I have no idea was stolen for me if you no is there no medicine oh shit i have a scope i can now see why i have a scope yeah so that i can actually look why well, I, I don't know why i wouldn't just use first person but hey i appreciate the thought oh my god i understand it No, this is crazy. I get it. <gasps> Shit, I got it. Scope can zoom. Scope is there to line me up generally because I don't have diazepam. <gasps> you know what? That's creative. I'm I'm so here for it. Where are you exactly? You're somewhere around here. I know you are. I lost him. Back to the Oh, wait. That might have that is him. That is him. Hello. That didn't take long. Whoosh. Are we done? No, there's there's another one. Okay, he's walking. Is 
There's more. Oh, there's one over here. Okay, the scope thing was cool. That was cool. I liked that. Impressive. You can't do it because you removed the quick swap. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, I, I would have just done quick swap, but I, I unbound it to make it control just like MGS 2 and 3. So I kind of screwed myself on that one. Hold on. I see what we're doing here. Little sniper perch. Oh damn, four or three shots to break and a fourth to kill. Sniper snake. Hmm. Oh, we're done. Just crawl back. Yeah. Uh, ended up not wanting it and then gave it to me. I had that copy of MGS2 since 2004. God damn. I mean, I've got a couple games like that. Like my, uh, my, I have a black box Resident Evil copy that was my dad's copy before I was born. And I still have it. I have a couple games like that, that like I played growing up because they were just hand-me-downs from my dad having them. Um, that I still have and that I still like use the discs like I have Halo 1 and 2. I, I was born at that point, but I'm not that young. Uh, but like those were still he, he bought those to play them himself and just they've ended up being my copies now because he doesn't he hasn't gamed like since I was born pretty much. Or no, since my sister was born because he has Halo 1 and 2. I misspeak. Um... Get the hell off. We made big progress. We got through like 40% in, in one three hour run. So that's pretty good. Uh, if you don't install it to hard drive via in-game options, do some tests before streaming. Yeah, I'm, I'm using RPCS3. I'm going to dump a copy with it. Um, some people were like, be, be aware there's like performance issues. It doesn't perform really well. Um, I've got a juicer PC, thankfully, because I just... I went all out because I was like, this is a work investment. So I just, I juiced out my PC when I rebuilt it last year. And I know that on my sort of specs, um, it should be good. I, I've seen other benchmarks with specs similar to or a little below mine and seems good. See you tomorrow, Tekken Day. That's right. We're playing Tekken on stream tomorrow again. It's going to be a good ass time. I've been, I've been cooking on Tekken. I've been getting better. There's no menu music on this. And I know that if I go back further... It's going to play the intro, so we'll just do this in silence. How much storage do you have on your PC? Um, internal storage, I have four terabytes because I didn't get huge drives. Because um, drives are like, I can just swap them out later. That's super easy. Um, it might detect the dump as running from disk. I would think it should. I think it should. Probably. I'll go with it. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, if you did enjoy it and you haven't done so already, feel free to go ahead and leave a sub. Come back another time. We're doing this. We're playing Tekken tomorrow. And then, hold on. I have the schedule for the next few days. It's just that they're not, uh, like, on YouTube yet. Um, but we'll be doing Armored Core 4. Wait, today is Thursday. So we'll be doing Armored Core 4 on... S or 4. We'll be doing Armored Core. I don't know why I'm saying four. We're not playing four. We'll be doing Armored Core on Saturday. Then some Ace Combat stuff. We're, we're doing a bunch of stuff. Come back for any of it. <laughs> Maybe we might start doing some Boomer Shooter stuff just for fun because chat has encouraged me with a potentially bad idea, but chat encouraged me, so it might happen. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh yeah. Also, if you enjoyed and you haven't done so already, feel free to go ahead and leave a sub or a sub. I looped. God damn it. A like. Leave a like. Helps with algorithm and stuff. Blah, blah, blah. Um, 
If you're looking for links to anything outside of YouTube, like Twitter or Discord server or whatever, those are in the description. Uh, if you haven't seen the Acid 2 video, the review of Metal Gear Acid 2 went up this morning, or if you're just behind at all on any of the reviews, Metal Gear wise, like any of the spinoffs, probably, because I know most people keep up pretty well with like the mainline ones. Um, the playlist is pinned at the top of chat if you're looking for any of that. Other than that, though, once again, I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you always back here next time. I hope you all have the rest of your day. Thank you, Seamus. Uh, I think that's it. Thank you for coming to the stream and goodbye.